Sure. Well, by 2030, it's anticipated that will be a shortfall of uh, uh, water by 40% relative to demand. And part of the problem is, and in fact, in terms of risks, water is um, in the top five risks, according to the World Economic Forum's Global Risk Reports this year. So um, in terms of water, the problem is that water is not priced correctly. In some of the areas where water is most scarce, uh, it's least expensive. And in some of the areas where water is most abundant, it's expensive. And so that means for businesses, it's actually um, uh, something that is a relatively abundant resource to use in scarce areas, and that's unsustainable. And why is it that businesses have not been accounting for the true cost of water correctly? Is it because they're not taking into consideration the pollution element? I think it's because uh, regulators will price water by and large. It's a regulated um, commodity. And uh, therefore businesses assume it is priced correctly. Markets are genu generally quite uh, good at pricing scarcity. Um, except in this particular case. And what we're seeing going forward is that because of things like climate change, water is the flip side of climate change. This will be the impact that businesses feel severely in the future. And so businesses that assume that regulators are pricing water correctly may be assuming incorrectly in the future. And how reliable are these current methods of analytics to begin with? I mean, there clearly is a transition uh, towards a, a low carbon, a greener economy, and that process has begun. But then what about the tools used to analyze how much uh, emissions are actually uh, um, uh, going out into the air? I mean, does, uh, can we rely on these numbers? Um, some of the numbers that are reported um, are variable in their accuracy. So we find that businesses uh, find it quite difficult actually to report on forecasted emissions, for example, and the extent to which their business will be affected by climate policies is also an area of uncertainty. And to address that, what we've done is we've analyzed uh, the extent to which businesses are exposed to future regulations like carbon regulations, for example, carbon pricing regulations, for about 13,000 companies. And we provide that information to institutional investors to allow them to make better decision making. And do you find the question that we ask, obviously because we're a business channel, is whether doing good, doing good for the environment, doing good for society, is also good for business as well? What do your findings tell you? Absolutely. It is about doing good for business. Um, in the United States, for example, there's over 3,000 businesses that have signed up uh, to the We Are Still In campaign, representing 173 million people in the US. And uh, the reason why they've done that is because uh, businesses are feeling the impact of climate change today in terms of water scarcity and other types of impact. And so clearly, if, if it's going to cost you more to do business in a world that is uh, facing some of these extreme pressures, then it's wise to be able to adjust to some of these pressures in the future to reduce your risk exposure. And also there's the opportunity side. There's a huge opp opportunity available to those businesses that make the shift, make that transition to more sustainable economy. And it's estimated that around 300 million jobs will be created if we achieve the sustainable development goals. Question for you because you're an expert on this. How effective are carbon taxes in curtailing greenhouse emissions? Is, the, is it the most effective way of getting companies to abide by these uh, constraints? We haven't seen that it's been that effective yet, uh, but that's partly because there aren't that many carbon taxes across the world. But there are nations that are, are imposing carbon taxation, Europe, uh, China, various other places, some states in the US. And where they do that, that is effective. So we would see that as a growing trend. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.